Hi everyone, today we will learn how to replace the background from a video uh, recorded with a green screen. For that we will create a new project, VFX, and then we go to compositing, we enable US nodes, and we remove the render layer because we won't need it. Then we add a video clip or movie clip, we load the video clip that we are interested in. You can find it here, in this case it's Natasha with the um, green screen behind. And then we can connect this one to the viewer, as well as the composite. Then before we start removing the green screen, it's also important to go here to the motion tracking tab, select the video, and then we have to create a mask, because that's going to help us to remove all the undesired parts that are not green screen or that we are not really interested in. So for that we click um, a left mouse, and then if we want to adjust a bit the, the corp, we can hold the, the mouse, the left click, and just um, drag a bit until we cover most of the green screen without going too close to the body because that's the sense of the match nodes that will remove the green screen. Then after removing, <coughs> after selecting all these parts, we select all of them with A and then I to create a keyframe. Because when we move ahead, she's lifting her hand and the mask will need to be updated. And we can also do that by recording the, the frames that we are moving. So if you press auto keying, you won't need to, to do anything with the eye. Then here she will start lifting her hand. Then here she's lifting her hand already. So if you move these keyframes, they will be already updated. So if you come back, then we can adjust this here. And then we will see that there, there is this transition. Just adjust each one of the frames until you have a correct mask. In, an, in this case, I'm just going to skip this part and have it done more or less uh, so you can understand how the process works. And let's just keep this match for the moment. Then we go back to compositing and we go to the first frame. Now that we are in the first frame, what we will need is to load the mask that we just created. So for that, we click on mask and then we load it here, which is this one. And we can see that this is the mask that we're, we have just created, the white part. And now we have to, to add the king node. And this node, what it's going to do is it removes very easily any color that we are setting and it also plays a bit with the black and white colors and the brightness and all this stuff. So for that we are going to put now the mask into the garbage, but what you can see is that it's doing the exact opposite of what we want because the white part is the part that will detect as garbage, so for that we have to invert the mask. So we just load this node and now we see that the part that is completely deleted with the mask is actually the opposite of what we added as a mask. Then let's select a different color here, for instance a greenish, or we can also do it by selecting the original photo and then going here with the color picker, let's select a dark color of the green, and then again go to the king screen, and you can see that most of it has been deleted. However, it's not exactly this way, you can see if you go to the mat, that there are some parts that are a bit transparent and also some part that are undesired. Moreover, if we went a bit forward in the frames, we may find that there are some parts that are not keyed out and we want them to be keyed out. Then the pre-blur would be helpful if we had any holes in the middle in the t-shirt because it would, before deleting anything, it would blur everything and then those little holes that are in here, they would be, they would stay in the form. So if we increase this pre-blur, we can see that these holes in the towel, they are actually now staying in the photo but this is not what we want in this case. So we just leave it to zero. Screen balance means how much we're uh, comparing the color, the green color to the rest of the colors of the, of the image, but usually 0 0.5, which is with the one that comes by default, is the one that works the best. The spill is in case, if you go back to the image, imagine that we had a lot of green in the, in the body that we are deleting. If we go to increase the spill, you see that it's deleting even more part of the green from anything in the photo. But in this case, it was actually quite good already the result if you remove if you put it back to zero you see that it's a kind of greenish so let's just leave it to 0.5 then we have the edge kernel radius and the edge kernel that works for for the edges and let's say that you want some um, thicker edges and you would increase this value here and if you play with this value here it's just like the tolerance so the higher the less tolerant and then you're kind of removing all these other parts that were not real edges and now you have a very clean and, and nice edge around here, but this is not something that we're going to use right now. So we can actually leave it to 0.1. We don't really 
care too much about this one. It, it can be helpful if you want to blur only the edges. It looks quite mm, good already, the result. You can play a bit with the black if you want to remove some black, but here won't work properly probably because you're deleting part of the sweater. And the same with white. So if we were to decrease a bit the white, you will see that we are recovering part of the colors that we that were gone before. And now it looks way better. Then here you can play a bit with the delete and arrow, that means increasing or decreasing the area that we are deleting. So if we increase that to something exaggerated, to 15, you will see that now instead of green screen it's blue because we did the, we used the dispel factor. And then if you were to minus 3 for instance, you will see that it's actually even uh, smaller, the area that we are using. And it's starting to cut these parts here because they were not completely opaque. So if you go to here, you will see that it's deleting almost all the image already, like it's getting too deep inside and it looks so weird. So for our case that it already looks good, we can leave it to zero. And then you can also play with these values, feather, it's just to do the same effect but blurring all the parts. And then post blur, in case you are not too satisfied with the results, it also can be combined with the feather. But for our case, we're just leaving it this way. Imagine that you were having some parts deleted here, like, I don't know, if your sweater had those kind of greenish stripes, you would be able to create another mask and then add it to the core mat. To add mask, you can also do it with uh, any other matte uh, node. You can also, for instance, create this color key. Imagine that those stripes were deleted, so we would be able to select the original image, put it here, and then about the key color, go and select those stripes. And then if you see this part here, and then we increase a bit the hue and the saturation, and something like this, and then the mat, you will see that this is the part that is getting deleted, and if you wanted to actually recover this part here, you would be able to invert this mask and combine it and put it to the core mat. So something like, imagine that, that those stripes were being deleted, so you invert this part, you apply also the, the mask if you want, by adding a mix uh, node, and then this mix node will use this as a reference, and also the mask, for the mask you're just uh, multiplying and then the result is only the part that it involves the mask and also the color key. Then you would put this into the color mat and the result would be a more neat color mat. So now this part won't be deleted. So even if we increase this part here and we try to delete more part of the image, you will see that those stripes are staying untouched. But this is not something that we need, it's just for you to understand how it works in case you need it. And then, now that we are done with this, let's just save the image, the output. If you render once this, you see that the result is quite interesting, quite good. Just check all your frames in case you need to adjust some other parts. And then let's just go to the render. You can render that in Eevee. And just choose a folder, wherever you need, and Control F12 with PNG and save all these frames that you're interested in. Also remember to change the start and end frames. When you have all the pictures that in my case are already saved here, you can already go to the next uh, project. So we open a new file of Blender, you can go to a general one, and then here what we're going to do is just delete the cube, you center the camera somewhere so it will be easier for you to edit and to play around with it, just put it to the center, something like LG could work as well, rotate it 90 degrees in X. Now that we have it here, go to the camera settings, we set it to orthographic. You can play with the size of the orthographic scale here, so for instance now let's just set it to 1. And something that you will need to add now is in preferences, image as planes. You can now import all your footage, for that we are going to select all these pictures, animated image sequence and shadows because we don't want it to be affected by lights. Then import image. If you go to render or you go, you go to this material view, you will see that it's not visible through the camera because it's just behind. So what we can do is to move the camera in the Y axis. Now, since it's the orthographic, you won't see any difference even if you move that in Y. So it should. So for instance, here you see that it's still in the same place. But what you can do is to move it up and down. So for that, we can just go to Z and something like this and X. And now you can see that it's quite centered. However, the proportions are 1.78. So for that, we are going to go to the camera back and the orthographic scale, let's try with 1.78. And this is going to give us a similar proportions to what we have in the image that we're using here. Then we have to import another plane. We could use it as a import image as planes, or you can just use a normal plane. 
Let's rotate this plane in X axis 90 degrees. Let's put it a bit back in Y so you don't have this Z fighting. And let's add a new material. This material will be an emission and the emission will be an image texture. Then load here the video that you're interested in adding as a background. And now that you have everything already combined, you can play around with the textures and the images that you're using. Remember to put as a start frame and the, and the amount of frames the number that you're interested in. Let's just say in this case it's 250, although it's a bit more. And in vector, set it to window. And then we don't really need it to repeat, so we'll just put the clip. And then we have the part that we're interested in. So we only need to play around with Natasha now to adjust it to the size of the background. So let's just go back to the plane and perhaps scale it down a bit, bring it a bit down. So let's just play around until she fits into the whole footage. If you want, you can also rotate it a bit, something like this, considering there is a bit of inclination in the, in the shore. And also this part is going to be harder to merge with the sand, so you can just put it back a bit more down and now that we are all set you can see that if you render once she already looks more or less inside you have to adjust a bit the the colors and to make it match with the gradients the bright the brightness and perhaps adding some sand into the towel it would increase the realism to all of it then what we're missing here is some shadows you can see that you already have some shadows in the sweater because of the way it was recorded before. We could have deleted this part here in the previous step, but since we didn't do it and we don't really know where the sun is, I guess it's somewhere around here, you can put the light to cast shadows into this direction so it will look natural. So for that we are going to create new layers. Let's just duplicate this one. This is going to be Nata. And then there's another one that will be the shadows. You will understand later why I'm creating those three layers. Then let's come back to the normal view layer. Let's rename the things. This is Natasha. Then this is the environment. Then let's just move this plane to a new collection. Let's create another plane that will work as a shadow. We have to lower it a bit so it matches the floor or the towel. Let's just rotate a bit the plane in X axis so it looks better later. You will see why. Just feel free to, to play around with these values as much as you want. In this case, we will need it to cycles and GPU because we will be playing with the shadows and, and some other stuff. So once we have the shadows plane that will only catch shadows, we don't want this to do anything else. So let's just go to render and then we see that the shadows are pointing to the wrong direction. So let's find the sun, enable nodes and make the sun point to the right direction. You don't see any shadows because, because they are right behind this plane. That's why we have to create a different layers. So let's just continue with these layers. Let's select the shadow plane and move it to a new collection that is the shadows. Now that we have those collections, let's just put the light into this collection here. And for this view layer, let's disable those two. Let's go to the second collection and disable the first one. And then let's go to shadows and the only one that we need to disable is the first one so we can still see the shadows. You can play around with the light in a way that it looks just right. Select the light and play with the strength so it doesn't look so strong the shadow until you have a result that you like. Now that we have all this collection set, let's just go back to the view layer and try to render. Now that we have rendered all these different layers, we can go here to compositing, use nodes and load different render layers. So we will need those three. One of them is the view layer, the other one is Nata, and the other one is Shadows. Something that we did wrong is that we don't want hair to be in this layer completely. We, the only thing that we want from here is the shadows. So let's just go back to layout and to layer of shadows. And then let's set this one here to view layer and set undirect only. This way we can keep only the shadows. Let's just render again. Now that we have the three layers, let's just play around with the alpha over so we can combine them into a final result. So let's just put this image here and this one there. Let's just set this box here so the result looks better. And we can see that the shadows are a bit strong so we can lower them later. Now that we have the shadows in, in Natasha, let's just put this new background with the footage that we recorded. And this is the result. So you can see that the shadows are a bit too strong. Let's just go back and we enable this layer again just to 
see how it looks. We can play with the light. And for that, we can also see that the shadows are a bit cut. So let's increase the size of the plane. This one can work already. And all we need is just to modify the sand direction. So I'll just say that we want it into this direction. We see that the plane of the shadows is actually cutting them a bit. So what we can do is make it also bigger or move it into this direction so it covers all the shadows. Now that all the shadows are visible, let's just play around with the sand a bit more. So we can still keep the effect that there are some shadows in the, in the sand. Now let's just pull down a bit the strength of the sand. Now let's just render that again and let's go to the compositing. So if we select again any of the layers and we select the final result, we can see that the shadows look a bit better now and they are kind of integrated. So what we can now try is if we put the final result into bright and contrast and we view this node and we increase the brightness to the top, we can see if there are some parts that are brighter than others. If we put back to minus 50 and keep decreasing, you can see that the brightness is quite similar, so it's darker in the end, but it, these colors are more or less the same. This is a way to know if there are some parts that are more shiny or darker than others. And then this way you would be able to adjust only the parts that are brighter or try to make them match with the, with the background footage. You can also do the same with the contrast. And you can see that it's actually quite aligned already with the colors. Maybe this one has a bit too much of contrast. So you would be able to decrease only for this image here and then you can compare the difference and instead of using the previous image let's just put this one with a new contrast around here and now this is matching a bit more in the contrast sense. Something else that we could do in case you had here a silhouette that is not properly keyed out is to create a blur that is only affecting the borders. So for that we're going to use the alpha. You can see that there is a difference between the part that we are using and the part that is completely transparent. And to isolate the border, we're going to use this node, delete and erode. So we duplicate this one here. We introduce the alpha as mask and then increase this, this value here to two, for instance. And then you decrease this value here to minus one or minus two. And then you put a mix node and you subtract one minus the other. So you just get the one that is bigger minus the one that is smaller and the result is a clean border. You can also see that here you're keying out some part that you're not interested in, so that means you could also fix them with some mask. From the final result, you can try to blur only the parts that are from the border. So you introduce this image, you will see that there is no blur. Let's just set the variable size, and into the size, we're going to link this border here. And then now, let's put something in exaggerate so you will see the effect you can see that the only part that are blurred are the borders. I just put it down to something about 5 and then if you compare you can see that it has a slight blur in the borders without being too noticeable but it can help to merge both images because usually you don't have such a sharp difference between the foreground and the, and the background so this way you're, they're kind of blending together a bit more and in this case the colors are matching quite good but in case you wanted to modify a bit the colors or to add some color correction or color balance. So to add this color balance, you have two options. One of them is to apply it before doing the alpha over like we did before. So adding this image here and then this to the alpha over, or we can just use this factor that we have in there. So let's just do it in the second op with the second option. Let's just connect the image here. Let's apply the factor of the alpha. And then if you change some colors, you will see that it's only applied to the footage that we recorded. So let's just maybe put it a bit more orange, a bit warm. Then something that we could do also is play with the RGB corpse. And in this case, we would do exactly the same. You can increase the red color, for instance. And then for in here, if you apply again this depth factor, you can see that it's only applying the red change to the parts of Natasha. And I think that would be it. You can play around with the colors, try to merge this one a bit more or just apply any other filters but now you know how to use each one of them and how to combine them let's just not forget to add it to the composite and now you can render all these frames and pretend that you were actually in the beach or wherever you want so if you like this video and you don't want to miss any videos with similar content feel free to subscribe and like the video see you next time